and we admit all. Okay, everyone's coming in. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone to the Islamic Courses uh, session titled Book Launch Review. Uh, we're very honoured and privileged to have uh, Sheikh uh, Dr. Professor Jibril uh, Haddad from the University of Brunei. And our host today is going to be Dr. Ramon Harvey from Ibrahim College in Cambridge Muslim College. And it's a book review launch discussion on the Maturidi school from Abu Hanifa to Al Khofri. Um, just a quick reminder to everyone um, Ibrahim's going to be hosting. Uh, just a quick reminder can you please put all your devices on silent? Number one, it is being recorded. If you're not on our mailing list, leave your email on the chat and you'll get a link. And there is a questions and answers session. So, for the first, at least half an hour or so, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Harvey will be engaging with the Sheikh uh, on the book uh, with his questions as well. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to uh, Ramon. Thank you. Okay. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, welcome to everyone who's joining. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, an excellent session, inshallah. Um, it's a great honor to be with uh, uh, Sheikh and Dr. Jibril Fuad Haddad. I'm going to just give a brief biography uh, uh, and biographical information, although I'm sure uh, it's not really needed. Um, um, I'm sure many of, or everyone uh, is aware of the of the Sheikh's um, uh, uh, writings and and uh, lectures and so forth. But I'll give that, and I'll also talk about some of the projects that he's involved with um, with Beacon Books, who um, are publishing the um, the book of, uh, that we're studying today. Uh, we're talking about today and then we will um, get into the um, interview and the questions. So uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jibril Haddad um, um, is uh, from Beirut, Lebanon. Um, he's studied um, in many places in the world, including the UK, US, France, Lebanon and Syria. Um, he holds a doctorate um, from a, a university in Malaysia, also from Columbia University, New York. Um, he's spent many years studying in Damascus, Syria um, and received um, um, the Ijazat from uh, over 150 shiuch, uh, and he's also authored dozens of books, hundreds of articles um, dealing with aspects of Islamic hermeneutics, Quran, um, um, the uh, Hadith, um, the um, uh, and of course re relevant to our discussions today um, with the uh, Ilm al-Kalam and theology. Um, until 2018, in, in the recent uh, uh, years, uh, Dr. Haddad has been a, um, a professor at the uh, University of Brunei, Dar es Salaam, in a applied comparative tafsir. And during um, this time, he has been working on a, a number of works, uh, including the um, uh, uh, translation of the tafsir uh, Al Baydawi, one of the most famous and um, recognized and um, popular tafsirs in uh, Islamic history. Um, the first volume uh, of the English translation was published in 2016, and it uh, won an award. Um, um, and um, it's uh, they're looking Beacon Books are looking to publish the whole nine volumes very soon. Um, and in that regard, they are have been fundraising to uh, fund the publication um, to, pu to to publish nine works of full tafsir translation is not cheap. And they are um, looking to re meet their goals soon, so any support is um, greatly appreciated. Um, and the link sh is should be put, inshallah, I'm told the link will be put on the chat so that you can follow through to Beacon Books website and support the project um, uh, and, and find updates there. Um, this is obviously a, a, a milestone uh, in, um, uh, in the history of uh, translating uh, classical texts into English. Um, uh, it's a, uh, obviously it's been years of, 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 of diligent and hard work, and it requires a great level of expertise to be able to render a, um, a, a, a um, classical tafsir such as uh, Al Baydawi um, with all of the different disciplines of Islamic knowledge that um, are brought into that tafsir to be able to render the meanings, to be able to clarify um, the technical discussions um, and, and put it in a, in a way that's accessible to um, contemporary readers is a great. Um, Khidma and um, uh, um, effort for the for the ummah and for the the intellectual tradition, and so we wish the the book um, a speedy and excellent publication, 
uh, and for it to be available uh, soon and consulted by those researching as well as studying Islam. Um, other books um, previously with Beacon Books include, uh, the Sheikh has uh, produced, include um, the, the Encyclopedia of Hadith Forgeries by uh, Mullah Ali Al-Qari, um, and um, in the, of course the book that we're talking about today, The Maturidi School from Abu Hanifa to al Kalthari, which should be imminently available. Um, it's, it's already available to purchase, um, and um, I'm, you know, it's 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 in the final stages of um, production. It should be printed and and available very very soon. So um, I want to turn now to the actual book itself, the Maturidi School. Um, uh, this um, this work, just to take from the very beginning of the book um, and to sort of summarize, it summarizes um, the. Um, the point of the book and the, and the purpose of the book. Um, and um, uh, the author writes, um, this book, uh, this work is a survey of the salient themes and comparative translation of the bullet points of the most important Maturidi authorities and their doctrinal textbooks with the synoptic, i.e. presenting a condensed overview, bio-bibliography of Maturidi scholars and scholarship in descending order of antiquity. It highlights their resolutions, taqririrat, as the defining parameters of Sunnism, and can serve both as an introductory synopsis of the great themes of Maturidism and as a tool for the study of the school's theology from its early founders to our time. So to explore more about uh, what this uh, book will cont uh, contains in it, um, um, uh, why um, it, it has been written and, 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 and what it will um, provide for um, Maturidi studies in, in the English language, um, I, I'm very um, grateful to have the opportunity to uh, interview the Sheikh, and then we will turn to your own questions, which I believe will be um, available um, on the chat or, um, you know, however it's managed normally, uh, um, in, we can also allow them uh, to be said live, just indicate uh, to myself or to um, Mizan, um, you know, who, who, what question you have, and we'll try to uh, facilitate you to ask your questions um, to our uh, distinguished um, guest. So um, the first question I have for you, um, uh, uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, um, uh, Sheikh uh, Jibril. Um, assalamu the first question. wa rahmatullah. Um, thanks for appearing uh, uh, with us um, from uh, Brunei, uh, I understand. Um, alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you. The first question I have is, um, why did you choose the Maturidi School for this bio-bibliographical treatment? And can you tell us um, just to ex, uh, expound uh, or, or expand that introductory paragraph and just let us know what the intended purpose and audience of the book is. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for your introduction and your, uh, your presence. And uh, for this question uh, as well, of course, uh, um, I, I have been working on the Ash'ari school probably more, but uh, it seemed to me that at this juncture in time, uh, with all of the uh, the interest that I, uh, I I had towards the Maturidis and the sources that uh, I had in my hands, I wanted to focus a little bit on uh, on that to actually find out for myself what I had at my uh, disposal of resources. And what exactly I could uh, extract of general understanding concerning those resources for myself, actually, you know, for most of my work, actually, uh, I was selfishly the first one to benefit and the, you know, probably the most to benefit uh, to begin with, you know, of, of, uh, of the research and the publication that I was doing. And I wanted also to uh, present the Maturidi school to the non-Maturidi public here in, uh, in Brunei. Uh, at the time I was still in, and I gave this presentation, um, uh, you know, in, in one hour's time of the Maturidi school and its uh, salient themes. But the book uh, was uh, a, a sort of edifice uh, to remember that moment, and also to um, uh, to maybe uh, reflect it in 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 a deeper uh, in a deeper sense. But the purpose of the book is is uh, to vulgarize that knowledge, to to spread it for the lay people, 
uh, and the non-specialists. And so, you know, when I say edifies and that, I don't really, I don't mean it in the, in the sense that it is uh, something deep or big. Uh, no, it's, it's just meant to be a, a reliable overview and uh, also uh, with uh, uh, oriented towards translating key theological terms, you know. So it doubles really as, a, as an index of theological te technical terms, which I like a lot of my books to, to include that kind of glossarial aspect, like the four imams, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Baidawi, of course, a lot, and uh, even the Qari uh, with regard to Hadith uh, terminology. But to understand what we are talking about, if we, if we do that in English, and we, have to, we have to be picky about the terms used to, to translate uh, those concepts. And so I, I bring this uh, kind of concern about translation and uh, I, I, I might, maybe come off a little bit uh, as gung-ho about it, uh, but it's all for the good, you know, and uh, it's, it's a work in progress and it's a collective thing, really. Um, my greatest influence in this respect was the Reliance of the Traveler by Sheikh Nuh uh, Keller. Uh, so since that time when it first came out, uh, you know, I have tried to uh, keep to that uh, standard and try to to reflect it, and perhaps one day, you know, people will uh, will improve on it. And uh, but you know, I mean, it's still a big uh, step to be taken that our community of translators reach that level. Okay, um, uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to ask a more um, uh, sort of t uh, terminological and, and historical question. Um, some uh, uh, scholars um, who, who look at your book, it, it strikes me at least, would would see in the inclusion of figures such as Abu Hanifa, al Tahawi, Al Hakim al Samakandi, some of the early Hanafis, um, who, um, and particularly figures such as Al Tahawi and Abu Hanifa, who obviously uh, uh, were not in contact with al with uh, Abu Mansur al Maturidi at all, they would see an inclusion of them within the Maturidi school as somewhat an anachronistic. Um, and it may be suggested, uh, such a scholar or, or opinion may suggest it would be more accurate to think in terms of a Hanafi theology and its development in a broad sense, and then to look at a kind of more traditionalist track, which you know includes figures such as Atahawi, and then a more um, a rationalist track that filters through uh, Al-Maturidi, uh, Al and also some uh, scholars even connect this to the idea that Abu Hanifa himself had two modes of, of uh, uh, study, as mentioned uh, by Al-Bazdawi, Al Al um, that um, he taught Kalam initially, and then later on he stopped teaching Kalam. And so, um, and some have seen the sort of the differences amongst Hanafis as reflective of that. So I'd like to get your view of how you see the school, how you're using the term Maturidi, and what you think about the relationship of Abu Hanifa's uh, activities in Kalam to the later Hanafi uh, 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 tradition of Ilm al-Kalam. Uh, yes, that's a nice, uh, nice question. Uh, of course, uh, it's, it's obvious from the title. Uh, and uh, the title uh, is, is a bit of a... Uh, of a Tasamuh requires tasamuh uh, from the uh, reader. But you see, if we say uh, the Maturidi school from, uh, let's say, the year this to the year that, it doesn't mean that the years themselves are Maturidis, right? So uh, that would be the short answer uh, as to, you know, the, the markers. Uh, we might say, you know, from uh, from the time of so and so to the time of so and so, but so and so and so and so might not be uh, Maturidis. Uh, however, uh, more honest, it, it would be more honest to say that I included the proto Maturidis uh, into the title uh, and the founders of uh, what became the Maturidi school uh, indissociably. 
see, because the figure of uh, Imam Abu Hanifa uh, looms so great, uh, you know, certainly greater than the, the other two uh, that you mentioned. Uh, but at the same time, we, I included in the book people who are uh, closely related to the Maturidi school, either by school affiliation to the Hanafi school, or uh, because they discussed Maturidi texts like Ibn Suki and others uh, in a comparatist uh, perspective. Right. Thank you. I think that's uh, very, very clarifying. Um, I wanted to turn now to, um, uh, in the early part of the book, um, I should explain to um, the audience that the book um, has some earlier discussions and, and introductory sections about Maturidi doctrine, about positions in relation to Asheris and Maturidis and other elements of the discussion before turning to uh, uh, this bio-bibliographical study of the various scholars through the centuries. And in the early parts of this front matter, um, uh, you focus um, on a number of misconceptions in the positions of Asheris and Maturidis, um, uh, particularly showing that in some questions, there is more consensus between the two schools than is sometimes assumed from the Ikhtilaf literature. And I would be, I think it would be good to sort of enlighten the audience on maybe one of these points, just to give an example of an area of consensus that you identify. Um, obviously your choice, which. Um, yes, uh, well, it's always good to focus on uh, common points because the, um, the differences abound and uh, for those who look for them, um, it's easy to, to get lost in focusing on differences. And in fact, not only between Maturidis and Ash'aris, but also uh, among Maturidis themselves, among Ash'aris themselves, you know, to the point that, um, for example, uh, between the Bukhara masters of the Maturidi school and their, uh, uh, their uh, Samarkandi uh, uh, colleagues, there, there might be important differences to the point that they, you know, uh, it's almost as if we're talking about a, a different madhab altogether. Uh, for example, on the question of whether uh, Iman is created or not. So I have a footnote uh, on that because I like to remark it in passing uh, that, uh, you know, according to uh, those masters, uh, the, the Samarkand masters, you know, Iman was, uh, was created or, I or the Bukhara masters and the others would say uh, Iman is not created. Uh, it is uncreated and whoever says that it is created uh, is guilty of such and such. I mean, it's a very very grave charge, actually. Um, so when we this this did not uh, this did not prevent them from uh, you know agree on on everything uh, that they could and uh, of of being uh, you know I mean keeping uh, brotherly and cordial and uh, faithful relations uh, as people of the same uh, school. Same across the schools with the uh, Ash'aris as well. You will see that some uh, masters are more than others, like Al-Bayadi, for example, uh, of a master of, uh, an Ottoman master of Bosnian origin, I think he was Bosnian originally, was quite harsh uh, against the, um, the Ash'aris to the point that it, it took another Hanafi and Nabulusi with Ash'ari sympathies to defend him uh, against uh, Al-Bayadi. Uh, but you will see uh, Ibn Subki, who is famous for his Tabaqat al-Shafi'iyat uh, al-Kubra, uh, which is a, uh, an encyclopedia of uh, Shafi'i biographies, but it doubles as an Ash'ari source book as well. Um, he wrote uh, about uh, Al-Maturidi's Aqidah. And uh, he wrote also al nuniya which is sometimes uh, identified with the, that, that text of uh, Abu Mansur's Aqidah. 
uh, very sympathetically and you know there are corrections to be made uh, here and there but at the same time it encourages discussion and cross uh, mazhab uh, discussion so one thing that they might agree about for example is kasb the use of kasb earning earning of moral and ethical responsibility for acts uh, whether good or evil uh, which uh, make the uh, servant accountable for such acts and rewardable or punishable in consequence. Not that he has what they called istita'a before the acts or after the acts, the way that uh, non-Sunni schools uh, might say, for example, the Mu'tazila or the, uh, the Qadariya, which are synonymous in many respects to the Mu'tazila or the philosophers. Uh, as if uh, some kind of power was uh, made part of uh, what they would call the nature, the tabi'ah of uh, the human being, uh, independently of, uh, of any act. No. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, both uh, considered that uh, istita'ah was uh, uh, given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of committing to uh, the act. And uh, that's what they called uh, kasb or uh, irada, uh, irada juz'iya, uh, depending on uh, who was uh, using that term, I mean, the partial will or earning of the uh, servant. There's many other uh, points, in, in fact, where they agreed. But I mean, this is a point that is sometimes considered a difference, whereas in fact, it is not a difference. Mm. And Allah knows best because it is not an exact science at the same time. It is important to point that out. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, another example I, I benefited from uh, reading in your book um, concerns the um, Iman, the question of Iman. And um, it's uh, often famously understood to require internal um, uh, 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 assent and an outward affirmation and you uh, bring references to show that in many respects the the dominant consensus between the two schools is for this internal uh, um, uh, uh, assent being the core of iman and the outward affirmation being connected with the ahkam of the of the dunya um, uh, and if, if i'm correct in 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 that summary obviously i'm happy for you to Yes, that, but, yeah. uh, the confirmation in the heart is the, uh, is the irreducible core of belief. This is what I've seen in practice, you see, uh, of reading the texts and seeing that it really boils down to that uh, most, uh, most of all. But because both schools also have elements of uh, Ahl al-Hadith, and or Mu'tazila uh, uh, strains, let's say, uh, or um, influences, uh, there is a tendency also to include more than, uh, than one rukun, uh, certainly affirmation, and to a lesser extent also actions, which lest we forget is the mazhab of Bukhari, Muslim, Ahl al-Hadith, Imam Shafi'i, and uh, and those Ash'aris also who uh, were Ahl al-Hadith, such as Bayhaqi and Hushayri and uh, later on also Suyuti, who, uh, you know, take, takes to, to task uh, Kalami uh, approaches to uh, what, he, what he considers uh, overly Kalam approaches to uh, the definitions of uh, Aqidah in, in Imam Baydawi. Mm. So uh, it's strains. But uh, I think that uh, overall a voice emerges and a consensus emerges and I, I might be wrong, but this is what I see as, uh, as the, the dominant view of the, uh, uh, the, the core definition of belief, yeah. Um, uh, moving on to a, a different question. Um, despite these uh, uh, points of um, harmonization and reconciliation and agreement between uh, you know, Maturidism and Asherism as the two main Sunni schools of Kalam. Um, it's clear that the Mat Maturid tradition is its own distinctive school with its own um, positions and methodology um, and, and so forth. Um, in a sort of more broader sense, 
um, and especially for maybe those who are not specialists in Kalam, who may be a, uh, attending this talk, how, how would you characterize the contribution of Maturidi theology to Islamic civilization? Contrary views, you see, it forces one to stand for truth. And as, as it is sometimes said, uh, 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 the one that does not speak out in, ter, uh, in times of, uh, in times when the truth is being challenged and misrepresented is like a, a shaitan who is mute, a mute shaitan standing there and not intervening. Uh, so that the untruth continues to develop, and th which is wrong. So uh, the hidden blessing is that they stood up in the face of uh, uh, not only uh, Sunnah contrary views, but Islam contrary views. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, perhaps yani, uh, the reason why uh, they also focused on Al-Fazul Kufr, as I I mentioned in one section of the salient themes in the, the first part of the book, mm. yani, meaning the, uh, uh, the, the, the expressions that are unacceptable on the part of a Muslim or on the part of a non-Muslim also, but in a Muslim environment, mm. uh, the expressions that connote uh, unbelief, that call uh, on themselves anathema and condemnation, al-fazul kufr, uh, so uh, this was uh, for the education of Muslims, uh, really, uh, as we can see in our time, first and foremost, and first and last, too. Uh, so um, I think that in this way, uh, they continue to be a, quite a modern uh, school that uh, responds to the needs of the moment, as well as, uh, of course, historically old and established you know, being born at the same time as uh, its great counterpart, the Ash'ari school. Okay, that's it. That's very um, interesting uh, uh, perspective and an argument to make. And I think that's um, uh, a benefit. Um, uh, one thing in, in the early part of the book as well, um, you note some fascinating misattributions of Maturidi texts. And these are very important because if we had to speak um, about the scholars of the school, and um, to, to deal with the works that they, and interpret the works that they wrote, we need to know when they were written and who, who was the author in question. And um, it'd be interesting, I think, just to elaborate maybe on one uh, or two of the interesting uh, 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 misattributions that you did um, either discover or you, you are put, uh, putting it to wider circulation than maybe has been before. Well, it's, uh, it's a list in progress, you know, it's like the list of spurious attributions that I also added in my introduction to the Encyclopedia of Hadith Forgeries. Yani, we stand for truth uh, in all sorts of fields, right? So, um, the Aqaid al Nasafiyah, the one work really that I think uh, if any work rivals the Aqida uh, Tahawiyya uh, and uh, indeed dominates it as a, you know, as a fountainhead of Maturidi education, it is the Aqaid al-Nasafiyya. Aqaid al-Nasafiyya uh, attributed to Najm al-Din Abu Hafs uh, al-Nasafi. But uh, he, is, he is known mostly, he is known almost exclusively as a jurist and as a mufassir, as an exegete, not as a, uh, a kalam or a, a aqida specialist. And so uh, uh, it was challenged by uh, Ar Rudani, who is a hadith specialist in his uh, Thabat. I'd like to mention that. Uh, and um, it seems that it starts with Taftazani, the greatest commentary uh, author, uh, author of a commentary on the Aqaid al Nasafiya. Uh, but it has now become, you know, very common knowledge that it, it, it must be authored by Najmuddin Abu Hafs al Nasafi. No one challenges that. Mm. But in such a book uh, of uh, 
probable uh, probable spurious attributions because again you know forgeries are not an, an exact science as well you know you cannot you know prove beyond the shadow absolutely beyond the shadow of a doubt unless of course uh, you have dates of uh, like an attribution uh, to someone who's, who who was uh, uh, who was not even born uh, at the time, uh, or uh, or someone who is mentioning people who were not even born, you know, in their texts. Uh, so that author cannot be the correct author of uh, such a book, as I also uh, mentioned such an example. So these are two types. Uh, but I think the Atai and Nasafiya, I would like to. You know, I would welcome comments on that. If anyone has found the same, uh, found the same finding about the uh, authenticity or lack thereof of the Aqaid and Nasafiya. Yes, I mean, uh, it's a very, a very uh, that was a particularly interesting one to to myself um, because I'm, I think all of the other ones you mentioned at the Maturidi school I was aware of, but I hadn't come across this. Uh, I mean, it's just so. It's so accepted and well and well known, uh, uh, you know that um, that and Nasafiya is is to Abu Hafs, and so um, I think you know I would like to obviously dig into the the arguments a bit deeper and see, but I'm very open to to the possibility of these misattributions, uh, and um, it's, um, it's it's interesting that it was pointed out um, in by 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 uh, pre-modern Muslim scholars themselves, um, you know, saying this is a uh, incorrect. Mm. Uh, uh, attribution. It's not something that's a contemporary uh, uh, argument. It's, it's it's been there, and it just hasn't been picked up on enough. Um, and it should be given further further um, uh, uh, debate. And obviously, um, I think you you make a good case. Um, uh, I'm going to ask just one more question uh, in this part of the interview, and then hopefully open it up to our audience. Um, and I'm just you know we've we, I've spoken about uh, Abu Hanifa briefly with you and some of the classical uh, uh, elements of the tradition. I want to turn to the final figure that you study in the book, which is Muhammad Zahid al Kalthari, uh, who uh, died in 1952. And you make an interesting uh, case about his significance as a modern Maturidi scholar and defender of the school, despite that he did not write a full a full uh, kalam text. Um, can you uh, uh, sort of explain your view about the significance of al kalthari to the contemporary Maturidi school? Hmm. Well, um, he is recognized uh, even uh, by his uh, detractors, you know, as uh, someone who is a staunch, who was a staunch Hanafi, you see. So as a staunch Hanafi, of course, uh, uh, it, it behooves him to be extremely familiar with the aqidah side as well, and not just uh, the, the other aspects, the law, uh, history of the law, the usul, uh, the hadith uh, in defense, of course, of their standing as uh, hadith figures as well, uh, beginning with uh, Imam Abu Hanifa himself and so forth, the aqidah. And... Uh, uh, also, uh, it seems that the, the nearest that he came to uh, a Maturidi textbook was in defense of uh, Maturidism against the Ash'ari views of his, uh, of his Sheikh al-Islam, uh, whose uh, deputy he was, the last Sheikh al-Islam of the Ottoman Dawla, uh, uh, Mustafa Sabri uh, Basha. So, um, it seems that that was the impetus for him to uh, to uh, speak about the partial will and the uh, uh, complete will and the kasb uh, as well, uh, uh, the way that Mawlana uh, Khalid al-Baghdadi, Abdul Ghani Nabulusi and others had discussed in comparatist uh, terms. But he is very important and I, expand on him as on no one else, as you can see, and not because I <laughs> had been very long in bringing out that material, which I have had be, been building over the years. And this seemed to be the occasion to do it because uh, he's a, a hugely symbolic figure for Ahl Sunnah al Jama'a as a whole. And he, he really represents the, uh, you know, 
uh, at the cusp of uh, you know the latest developments with the fall of the Ottoman Dawla and the rise of uh, anti mazhabism and all sorts of uh, devilish manifestations uh, in the attack of uh, Islam and Muslims in the attack of Allah and his prophet really uh, he 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 is the one really that uh, carried the flag of defense of uh, truth and the illustration of truth um, in, uh, in Egypt, where I think he died in exile, uh, the end completely broken hearted, but I mean, after a valiant fight that deserves really to be remembered and to be studied because so much good came out of it, uh, of, uh, uh, standing for truth in his maqalat, as well as the many, many introductions to the books uh, that he edited, uh, as well as the precious uh, shorter epistles uh, that, he, uh, that he produced, and the debates that he held with his uh, contemporaries, such as the Shakirs uh, and, uh, in, 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 uh, in Egypt and others, uh, including refutations. Uh, where he sometimes does not name uh, the person. So it's some, sometimes difficult to pinpoint who he meant, but it can be found out if you really uh, read between the lines and do some research. So uh, it's, it's an important historical figure for, uh, for us. And uh, he also comes really at the end of the time when such thing uh, truly yani, were taken to heart by the majority of the ulama. Now they are the business of the minority of the ulama uh, because uh, it takes a specialist. But at the time, I think that it was more, uh, more common, uh, the, the discipline and the readiness uh, that uh, the scholars had allowed them to address uh, and to understand those issues more readily. Uh, scholars like Yusuf al-Dajwi and, uh, and the Rumaris uh, also in Egypt, uh, and elsewhere, and uh, and other uh, scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah who defended the the important princi principles across the schools, not not within a single uh, school or mazhab. Thank you so much uh, for for that response. Um, I think that when um, uh, the audience or those that uh, purchase the book do get a chance to read uh, those comments about Al Qawthari, they'll benefit from that, and I'm hoping that it could. Um, inspire some of uh, you know some of the audience or people who read the book to go on and to write further on his, on his contribution in the situation uh, in the 20th century and you know you know in uh, and how that relates to to our time in the 21st century. Um, uh, I would think now it's um, best uh, to move to the questions of our audience. We've got a question um, from Sheikh Asim yeah. Yusuf, um, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so so. Yeah. Uh, I'm muting now. Yeah, sure. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to uh, Sheikh Jibreel. To, wa alaikum uh, salam, uh, Dr. Yusuf. How are you keeping? You all right? Alhamdulillah. I recognize you from your back and from your voice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so, because it is better. For, uh, Aziz is better than Gharib. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mainly just to say salam to you. It's been a long time since I made salam to you. So I hope you're doing well. Hope the family is all okay and everything. Alhamdulillah, um, all is well. Alhamdulillah. But, thank you. Good, excellent. But while I have the mic, I've, I've, there's, there's a few questions to note. So firstly, thank you. I haven't seen the book, so um, I'll, I'll wait for it to, I'll wait for it to, to, to come through, inshallah. But just a couple of uh, questions. It might be two. It might be three. But I'll, I'll leave them with you, and then uh, you, I'll leave you to deal with them. So I, I get that. You know, I accept that, you know, this is a, it's a, it's a bio bibliography. Uh, it's a survey covering, covering 14 centuries. So I think it would probably be too much to expect a huge amount of detail or sort of comparative analysis, uh, you know, in, in a book of that nature. Uh, I was wondering though, what you, in, in terms of themes, firstly, uh, about the move from a discursive form of theology to a more madrasa pedagogical uh, uh, type of theology, you know, with, with mutun and commentary tradition. Uh, now that's quite sort of, you know, it's quite well known into the Ashari, the Ashari school, the, the, you know, if you look at the Tamhid of Bakhilani, 
uh, and you compare that to you know, later works that are written, there, there, is, there is a marked difference between them. And also some of the positions shift. Did you see that sort of lit literature change between works like the, the, the Kitab al-Tawheed of Maturidi himself and then let's say Sharp al-Qaid of Teftazani? Do you see that same sort of shift in the Maturidi school? That's the first question. Do you want me to just dump them all on you at once or? <laughs> no, let me, uh, let me answer this one uh, quickly. Uh, yes, of course, there is uh, the two different formats that are present. I mean, Bad'ul Amali uh, is very condensed uh, and its, uh, its commentaries then can expand. Uh, so you have the, the matan, the short matan, like the Aqidah Tahawiyah also uh, summarizing the, and so much uh, comes out also from abridgment of longer texts, because let's not forget that the Aqaid Nasafiya are in fact an abridgment of a much longer text by Tafsirat uh, al-Adilla by Maimun al-Nasafi. Maimun al-Nasafi. You see, so And then there are frankly philosophical long texts, you know, like Al-Hakim uh, al-Samarqandi, uh, for example, uh, and uh, other texts that are uh, longer and more difficult. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they compare to the Mawaqif of Al Iji, uh, whose uh, student he was actually, Nal Hakim al Samarqandi, and uh, really comes off as a, as a rebuttal of the Mawaqif, or as a critique of the Mawaqif, or as a reworking of the Mawaqif, let us say. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, there is all sorts of formats, uh, as you mentioned, also in the Maturidi uh, school. Okay. Do, do, do you notice a, a, a chronological shift where that was concerned between those more? I mean, I'm not. I'm not here referring to commentary texts as discursive texts. I suppose uh, the commentary texts are commenting on the metan and will bring out obviously a number of issues. But if you compare it to earlier works, like the, the, the best example probably is the Kitab al-Tawheed of Maturidi himself, which is a highly discursive mm. text. Uh, did you notice a, a sort of a chronological shift in the, in the majority format uh, as you were going through this sort of bibliography? Or do you still find these sort of philosophical discursive texts, you know, not necessarily metan based commentaries, but going throughout the, you know, throughout the, I'm, I'm thinking of, for example, the Mawakif al-Ilm wal amal of of, of, um, uh, of Mustafa Sabri, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, well, um, they respond to the needs of the moment. A uh, book like uh, Kitab al-Tawheed of Imam al-Maturidi uh, received, uh, received uh, or was it that we let Ahl Sunnah that received the commentary by Alauddin uh, Alauddin uh, Al Bukhari? No, I think the, the Kitab al Tawheed also received the commentary, but these are uh, يعني, these are huge books to study mm -hmm. and to, to copy, first of all, also, uh, you know, and, and to, to study. Uh, on the, so when you have shorter matans and uh, primers, as we would call them, uh, they are, I think it, um, uh, it makes more sense that they are the ones that survive uh, the best and that are transmitted the most and widespread uh, because they are also very mnemonic, easy to, to memorize and uh, to, to learn. And they are more systematic and they also, um, are divided into short sections. I mean, this is after all the principle of the Quran itself, the division into surahs, as I said, because it is more mnemonic. <laughs> so uh, it makes sense uh, that there is more of that, but is there a, a time shift stops? I, I did not see that, but, uh, but I did not look at, the whole picture with a view to finding such or to detecting such a time shift. So it might be there. I just never saw it. Can I, can I just um, intervene just to say um, in the interest of time to allow some of our other audience members to ask the questions. And if there's time to come back to your remaining questions, uh, Dr. Asim. Brilliant. Uh, we've got a question yeah, from yeah. Uh, Dr. Safrook. Um, I'm just going to unmute you now, Dr. Safrook. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. 
Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I hope you're well and then I hope your family are well and safe. Thank you, Thank you so much for, for the presentation and the book, inshallah. Uh, I've, I've ordered it and hopefully, you know, it, it, I can't wait to sort of uh, begin reading it. My question was really taking up um, your uh, point about Imam al kawfari being a symbolic, uh, a major figure of the 20th century for Ahl Sunnah. Um, my question, I guess, is beyond the 1950s, what do you think, how could the Maturidi school, or do you think this is even necessary, how can the Maturidi school become more relevant in the 21st century, given the rise in philosophical theology, analytic philosophy, um, there is there is enormous intellectual capital being invested by other religions in their theology. Um, and I'm wondering whether, uh, uh, you know, the Maturidi school being one of the true theological schools, according to our tradition, has something to say for the 21st century to answer sort of, you know, the fundamental questions that, that are perennial, arguably. So whether you have any thoughts about that. So Imam al kofi of course, as you mentioned, did his, uh, 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 his part in uh, defa, yeah, and, you know, defending uh, uh, onslaughts from all directions, whether internal, or external, but um, whether you think there are, there's something the Maturidi Madu school can do to be relevant for the 20th, 21st century. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure I'm not the, the one to answer that as well as many others, uh, beginning with our uh, honorable host, uh, Dr. Ramon, so uh, I might leave it to him, but uh, still uh, it is relevant because uh, it, it's uh, mission papers, as it were, it was and remains and continues and shall continue to be, uh, you know, the fight against uh, materialism and godlessness and godless thinking and material, materialistic uh, thinking. And uh, I, it seems to me that uh, there, these systems of uh, thought are not enough uh, to uh, really to bring you the essence of what uh, you know Islam uh, and true religion and true faith, true faith system, a true faith system is about. Uh, if it is, then good. You will see more hap happier people. Uh, soon, you know, in abundance, because uh, you say now that uh, they are coming up with a lot of discourses and they are being spread efficiently and so forth. So that the, let's see about the fruits. If the fruit, the fruits will be the proof of the tree. But otherwise, we we continue with our, you know, what we have always been uh, required to do. Yani balihu anni walau ayah. So it has to be in the proper understanding, and this is what Aqidah and the study of Aqidah is. Not that, you know, as Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani said, not that this is the stuff of happiness in the grave, you know, to focus on Aqidah. Because you, we, we just need to focus enough in order to move on and to into practice, correct practice, because we are people of action, right? Uh, more than discourse. So, uh, but I think uh, for uh, you know, tricky questions and ethical and moral questions of the day, uh, then that's the job of, uh, you know, jurists, fuqaha, usuliyun, and uh, specialists of, of aqidah also, if, uh, if the, the questions bear on aqidah, which I am not. Question from Khalid al Haq. Uh, be prepared to be answered. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Shaykhana, um, two quick questions. First of all, um, in the book, Islam and the Issue of Black Suffering, um, Professor Abdul Hakim Sherman Jackson says that the differences between the madhahib, yani Ash'ari and Maturidi, normally, famously, are said to be only like 12 or 13. And it's his assertion that this, um, this statement was based on political reasons. Otherwise, there are deep irre irreconcilable differences between these two. Do you agree? 
at one question. And second question is, some people say that um, affiliation to a madhab fiqhi is based on our constant need for furu' in our daily life. Can the same be said for affiliation to uh, madhab aqadi? Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you. Um, no, I don't agree with the first uh, finding because you see, if it was only one person saying that out of the blue, you see, uh, then such asks that was it an opportunistic observation to make? But when we find it's being made uh, across the centuries by people who have little in common uh, in uh, regard to politics or culture, uh, but uh, who are speaking from a standpoint uh, rightly assumed to be of honesty and of faith and faithfulness also to the ummah uh, in the sense of ad-dinun nasiha, then we are not allowed to, uh, to cast suspicion like that, you know, uh, from the... Uh, from the heights, as if, uh, you know, I mean, they are, uh, they are motivated by, you know, dark uh, motivations. As for the, the second question, yes, of course, you need to uh, be able to get up in the morning knowing where you stand, aqidah-wise as well, not just uh, to be able to uh, answer the practical uh, fiqhi uh, needs of the moment. Uh, because when push comes to shove, you see, and your faith is being attacked right and left, as it is every, yani, every moment that we, we connect to others in the English-speaking world, in the, uh, yani, in, in the non-Islamic uh, sphere, as well nowadays, even in the Islamic sphere, sometimes you would see uh, things being spoken from the pulpit that should not that, that need reconsideration, the way that they are phrased, and sometimes the way that they are even thought out and uh, rehashed, uh, because uh, we are getting weaker in, uh, in our faith, yani in the formulation of our faith and the understanding and expression of our faith. So that, that, con that education is a, con is a work in progress, and uh, it needs uh, teachers and reminders at all times. Thank you. We have a question from Rizwan. Rizwan, be prepared to be unmuted. Um, thank you. Um, I, my question was in regards to the founder of the school, um, uh, Malturidi. Um, did, did um, uh, would, would you, um, uh, what's, what's your um, uh, assessment of um, uh, the, that, that, so after Maturidi, uh, do, do, do you think that there was a move away from his doctrine with later uh, Maturidi theologians uh, under the influence of Ashariism? Um, and um, yeah, so that's one question. If, if I may ask a second question, um, if I'm allowed to, um, wh why uh, in the post classical age was Ashariism the dominant school and um, uh, uh, Maturidism was um, less prominent uh, in, 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 in the later uh, period, in the sort of late medieval, early modern period? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, it is interesting that uh, Imam al-Maturidi has certain views that are more reminiscent of Imam al-Ash'ari uh, later on, but in Kitab al-Tawheed, uh, which then uh, would make us uh, think twice about just attributing the uh, departure from uh, such views as uh, uh, due to influence from a uh, uh, non-Maturidi uh, origin, you see. Because uh, perhaps it was the, the school people themselves uh, that, you know, defined to tweak this or that view, just as Ash'aris themselves departed from the views of Imam al-Ash'ari on, for example, 
the prophethood of women. The prophethood of women uh, is a staunch Maturidi uh, non-negotiable point that they mention time and again in their primers. Uh, this is a rebuttal of, uh, of Ash'aris, but Ash'aris themselves uh, sometimes consider it a consensus, like Imam al nawawi would say it's, a, or, or, uh, or Al-Baydawi would say it is a consensus, whereas in fact it is not a consensus, precisely because Al-Ash'ari himself uh, consider it possible for women to be, uh, to be prophets, uh, as well as Imam Al-Qurtubi and a couple of others that I have researched and ascertained. So, um, as for the second question, why they would thrive, and perhaps because they go together with the, you know, the predominant uh, mazhab of uh, the area, or uh, this is, uh, this I suppose it is an interesting question to ask, but, um, you know, influences uh, wane and ebb, uh, so they rise and fall and Sometimes uh, you will see that Naisabur, for example, being the capital of Islamic uh, learning and knowledge, but uh, this, uh, this is no longer the case after a certain, a certain century. And uh, the principal uh, school also of uh, Al-Azhar being uh, this, but now it's that. Or, uh, and, and nowadays, you know, what, yani, uh, I do not have in mind, you know, a global picture of uh, Maturidism taking a background, but perhaps it was that the uh, Abbasid and then Ottoman uh, Caliphate, but then when the Ottoman Caliphate was put in place, you would see that uh, Maturidism uh, came to the fore and was defended as being, you know, the more apt mazhab in so many uh, questions of states that argument was made which uh, lends credence to the fact that you know i mean if there is a state that sees utility in promoting a certain mazhab then you will see that mazhab flourish uh, in the areas uh, that are uh, run by that uh, machinery allah knows best Roman, we've come to the end, um, unless the Sheikh gives us permission, we can continue. we've got so many questions, but it's very late now in Brunei, and I don't want to take up your time, but it's really your call and Dr. Romo. We can continue for a couple more questions, inshallah. Come on. Okay. Uh, we have, I'm just going to, there's a question that's come through. Uh, what, I think it's from Tayyib. Are there any thinkers who combine Akbari and Maturudi views like were Ashari to combine Akbari thought such as Shahrani? Another one is Salam, what influence if any Did you say Akbari? Akbari, yeah. Another one is what influence if any What is Akbari? Um, he may, uh, the, the thinking of um, uh, Sheikh uh, Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi uh, his no, school, no, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, what influence, if any, did the Greek philosophy have on the expression of the theology of al -Maturidi? You know, I, uh, I am with uh, Imam al Safadi on this. Uh, he, uh, he took the Aqidat al Awam from the Futuhat al Makkiya of Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, and he said, I saw no difference between it and Ash'ari Aqida. So. Uh, uh, of course, it depends on which, uh, which part of the elephant we blind men are, uh, you know, groping for uh, to define uh, such a, a giant as uh, Sheikh Muhyiddin uh, bin Arabi and his, uh, his thought on the matter of Aqidah. But I mean, this is what I have worked on. This is what I know. The Aqidat al-Awam, min uh, ahli al-Islam from the Futuhat al makkiya and in this respect, it is an Ash'ari Aqidah. Fantastic. And I think we've taken a final question from uh, Sheikh Asim. I'm just gonna unmute. Yes. 
Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, it was, I suppose some of the, some of my questions have been answered already. And the last one I would, I would ask you is, is where you place Badir Zaman Saeed Nursi uh, in, in, this, in, in this overview? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you cover him in the book? Do you consider him to be part of this? And then more broadly, do you notice a difference in the Ottoman tradition of Maturidism as compared to maybe other manifestations of Maturidism, um, uh, earlier manifestations as we were? Uh, well, you know, my my books, my my yeah, my books in general have many gaps. So this book has gaps, and you have found one of them, and I'm sure it has many other gaps as well. Uh, the place of uh, Badi al Zaman Nursi uh, as a huge educator in the time that he wrote in and taught in, um, just. He just, uh, I, I, I don't have anything on him from that perspective, but I, uh, I would pay more attention to, to that, yes, as a completion to a, a book on the Maturidi school. Uh, and I would, I would sit at the feet of uh, Turkish teachers or those who uh, learn from them uh, with regard to his, uh, his place in, uh, in that, uh, yeah, you know, in that survey. Um, so, um, Dr. Ramon, perhaps you have some thoughts on this. Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not a, um, a, a specialist of of, of Nursi's thought. I mean, I'm aware of his, of his contribution in a general sense, but I'm not the one to ask. Um, uh, I have I have heard that he is broadly, obviously, uh, you know, broadly from the Maturidi tradition but how much his thought reflects the Kalam tradition as opposed to his own unique theological project I, I wouldn't want to speculate. No at the same time uh, I wanted to bring to the fore certain uh, lesser known figures and uh, certainly to the English public uh, except to specialists like uh, Kamush Khanawi for example uh, as a uh, as a Maturidi writer or a Saidi of uh, Egypt, uh, also is obscure, uh, and others uh, who uh, commented on uh, the uh, Nasafiya or on the uh, Bad al Amali, other than Mullah Ali al Qari, who's, who's known enough to the English speaking public. So, uh, Badi al Zaman Nursi is well known to the English speaking public. So, I think uh, let people familiarize themselves first with some of those you know, uh, Maturidi figures, and also see the common thread that they have in their uh, uh, salient themes that keep repeating themselves faithfully through the same, you know, something immutable, something important, and uh, has to be reiterated, learned, and uh, established, re-established through the centuries, because it is, it is true, and it matters, and it helps. Uh, and of course, the works of uh, Badi Azan Nursi, in, uh, also in Tafsir, uh, as well as Waz and uh, Tasawwuf, they, they matter hugely. And he was also someone speaking to the masses, you know. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sure that we will see more of that coming out in, as editions and as translations. Uh, and uh, there's pl plenty of uh, symposia or uh, conferences also that uh, have him, you know, as a topic or as the main uh, topic. So uh, I think all in all, Yani, let us say that at least uh, this uh, th this uh, book on the Maturidi school school fills a gap, and uh, that it it will facilitate further uh, work in that direction, and then that work, inshallah, will include more figures uh, such as Badi al Zaman. Fantastic. So I think we've come to uh, so, yeah. Shall I, shall I close up? Please, if you can close up. Yeah, so um, I would just like to um, extend um, gratitude um, from um, Islamic courses, um, from myself, and from all of the uh, audience who have made it today, and those who will be able to watch the video later on, which we'll be putting out, um, just recording the session, uh, to uh, uh, Sheikh Dr. Jibril um, Haddad for giving us your time, for writing this book, and for all of your work. That you've um, you've done uh, and are continuing to do, and uh, may Allah uh, grant you um, good health, 
and um, uh, uh, and uh, Tawfiq to continue in your works. Um, and um, may uh, and thanks to everyone for coming along. Um, just to also reiterate that um, the book is available at beaconbooks.net. It's um, on the in the chat, so you can pre-order it. It's coming out very soon. Um, and also to support the uh, Baydawi project, which is uh, uh, ongoing and they're still fundraising. It's available through the Beacon Books um, Baydawi link, which is also there, uh, and also to, to benefit from that. So uh, with that said, uh, again, Jazakallahu Khairan, Sheikh uh, uh, Dr. Haddad. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim, and thank you, uh, Mizan, and uh, thank you all for joining and having me. Inshallah. Sheikh, we hope to see you, you know, Shifa, hope you get recovered very quickly, you know, because we want to see you uh, complete the Baydawi project. Yeah. Very, very important yes, for us. 50% done. 50%. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We're looking forward to it. And once it's done, we want to host you again, this time in person, in person That's rather right. than soon. Inshallah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa rahmatullah.